Okay, so in this section of the uh, video, I'm going to discuss how to make the coils. Uh, I'm going to uh, cover what the materials are that uh, you get with the kit, and then what the tools are about, and then actually how to uh, form the form the coils. All right. So the first thing to tell you is the uh, <clears throat> in the kit you'll find that there's two packages of copper wire. The coil and the copper rod wire is is, is one millimeter in diameter, and you, you want to make sure that you use that, not the wire for the spark rods. Also in the bag you'll see that there are the uh, the tools for wrapping them. There's a left one and a right one, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Um, so the first thing to uh, to talk about is is these uh, is the coil wrappers, and basically, essentially, what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap the wire around. The, you're going to wrap the wire around the uh, the winder, and then when you're done with that, then you will just uh, wind the coil off of the off of the tool, and that is pretty much all that there is to that. As we go through this, and I'll give you a couple tips, and that will help you uh, make nice uh, symmetrical coils. So go ahead and take the uh, wire out of the bag, and as well as the tools. Uh, you're just going to need to un un unwrap it a little bit. Um, and you want to straighten it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Uh, this wire is really malleable. It's an aluminum wire. It's copper colored, and I chose to do that versus using real copper wire because it's easier to work with, number one. And number two, it won't tarnish in time. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to get yourself a, a good pair of uh, diagonal cutters, and uh, you want those to be flush cutters. Uh, flush cutters basically have the advantage of being able to give you a nice flat, uh, flat cut on one side. If you use the other side of it, you'll get a diamond-shaped cut, and you really don't want that. So you want both ends of the coil wire to be cut with the uh, uh, with flush cutters, so they drop against the end of the wire. Uh, you cut these to five and a half inches. Just hold the wire down on your on a ruler at the five and a half inch mark. Lay it on the end. Again, cut the cut the wire. Uh, there you go. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires. Okay, so I cut my six sections of wire. Uh, what I what I basically did was I just took the uh, the first wire, I measured its length, and then I used the uh, that that first wire to gauge the lengths of the other one. Uh, you'll notice that whenever you're uh, done, you're gonna have some extra uh, wire left over, and you're gonna use uh, some another six sections of that. There's a vertical rod that goes through the middle of the coil. Those get cut into two and an eighth inch sections. So you just cut those into into straight pieces, and then there's after you're done with that, there's actually a little bit left over, so that you can go ahead and, uh, if you if you if you if you have a hard time with it, you can you know you have an, an, enough extra wire to make another coil if something happens while you're making your first coil. So the next thing to do is I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the first coil and show you how that goes. So again, you're going you're going to use the uh, the left and the right winders, and you're going to make three three left coils and three right coils. Uh, to do this and then essentially all you got to do is just hold the wire against the end of this guide let me get this closer so you hold the wire against the end of the guide and you hold it down firmly and then simply just wrap the the coil around the winder wrap the with the wire around the uh, around the tool and then when you're done basically you want to make the uh, the opposite end, the end opposite of the guide, you want to have it facing the opposite direction of the guide. And when you do this, you're going to notice that that wire is just a little bit longer. Um, there's plenty of space inside the, uh, the, the parts that, this, that the coil attaches to so that uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. You might trim off one end of it, but I would uh, suggest you, you know, try to put it together into the, uh, into the, uh, the other parts of the kit before you trim this wire. And I'm going to demonstrate how that goes a little bit later. But the uh, first thing I want to do is just demonstrate how to unwind it or unwrap it. So you just basically hold the coil and then screw the tool out of it. And that's about it. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of, oh, you'll notice that, you know, that these wires go off a little bit, uh, a, a little bit on, on an angle. You have to dress that just slightly. Um, it's not hard to do that. Again, I chose to use a a, um, 
a soft wire f for that purpose. You also notice that when you're done that the ends go in opposite directions and the reason for that is that one end of the coil goes into this bar and then in which is facing forward and then the other end goes into the box which is facing in facing backwards so that's all that there is to that so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my other coils but you can see that no uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward to, to wrap the coil and they come out pretty symmetrically um, because they are you know malleable you can tweak them a little bit if you need to and they don't have to be perfect and I'll tell you if you looked at the original uh, the original prop uh, that was on in Frankenstein on the machine and uh, those coils were a lot messier than these coils so at any rate let me go ahead and wrap the other coils and I will be Okay, so I'm going to show you how to go go ahead and install the uh, the coils into the bar. And you want to make sure that you have the uh, <clears throat> the holes biased towards uh, or up, and then uh, when you're putting the coils in, uh, you just uh, really all you need to do is basically just stick one end of the wire in. Now, to know which side is which, you want to think about it this way: the coil leans towards the side to to the outside so these coils will go um, in this direction so that they're all facing the same same way and then the other obviously the other ones go in the opposite direction and you'll see that when I get this done it's a little bit wonky but it's not too bad Okay, so when you wrap the coils, there's a there's a longer end, the end that comes off of the end of the winder that doesn't have the guide on it. Basically, is a little bit longer. You want to put the shorter end into the into the holes on the on the, on this crossbar, and then um, it's it's easier if you just put a drop of CA onto each one of them. You know, hold it hold it straight, put a drop of CA on it, wait for it to set up, and it basically will make it easier so that these don't fall back out when you're going to install this onto the box. So I got my CA and I'm going to go ahead and apply it. I'm really only trying to apply a very, very small drop. I'm not really trying to glue that in. Gravity and the design of the kit will hold it in place. So I'm just putting a small drop on there. I'm going to wait for that to dry, wait for that to set up. And then um, I'm going to move on to the next one. And you can see that I've kind of straightened it in there. All right, so I've got that in place. And I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them. And I'll come back. So I decided to add a little bit of zap kicker to that. And rather than spraying the whole assembly and endangering my paint, basically all I do is I, I dip my tweezers down into it and I get a small amount in there and just drop it down. Try to bleed it down the wire a little bit. <laughs> Drop it on top of the bead and of glue. Takes less time, less cleanup. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. There you go. So I'm done with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put my cap back on the CA or the zap kicker because I like to knock it over a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and put my glue or cap back on the glue. All right, so the, the they're they're firmly in place right now. Um, I'm not going to do anything with them for a couple minutes because I want to take a look at them. You'll, you'll notice that the ends of the wires are a little bit uh, a little bit off, a little bit crooked. Um, I would get them all about the same length, and you can make them the length of the shortest one. This one probably needs to be trimmed back a little bit. And again, I'm going to try to flush cut that. I think they're close enough um, for government work. Now, I want to test fit this before I actually glue it in place. Just to, you, know, you should do that basically just so you can see how things go together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay the, the two pegs into the front of the box. I'll zoom this back out a little bit. Put the two legs in the front of the box and look at the the 
flanges on there and see how things align with it. You know, you don't have to tweak it a whole lot, but what I did on the very first one of these I built was I just glued it, you know, I glued the the the, uh, the support in, in place, and then I went back and uh, I put each one of those uh, pegs into its hole. Uh, put it each end of the coil wires into the hole. So it's not hard to do that. It's a little bit, you have to be careful and delicate, whatever. So you put each one of those into the hole, and then again, just uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit of uh, super glue on each one of them to hold them in place. If the wires look like they're too long for you, and the, and the coils are sort of bending towards the front, which these are, then you're going to probably want to go ahead and trim the wires down a little bit more. Um, it's not hypercritical, but you, you want to get it so that they're not banging too much on the box. Once you've got this glued in place, the ends of the wires are going to be up against the cabinet a little bit if they're not perfectly in the holes to start with, and you'll have to you know keep them from scratching things up, whatever. But um, so it's a good idea to uh, to kind of gauge this before you glue this together and commit to to what you're doing there. But you can see that holding putting putting the cable or putting the gluing the cable coils into the bar here uh, makes a lot of sense. It just makes Makes it easier for you to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install with the crossbar and coil assembly into into the uh, into the box. I did go ahead and drill out the the holes already, as you can see, uh, so that I can put the coil wires through them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue into the holes here for the peg. Uh, for the crossbar pegs and then I'm going to make sure that that's uh, in place and flat before I do anything else. Um, you're going to have to pay a little bit of attention to the ends of the wires, again, so that they don't scratch things up on your box, but these boxes were, or the original prop was kind of beat up, so uh, if it gets a little bit messy, I don't think that's a big deal. Try not to put too much glue in here, Matt. And Cute or toothpick basically to coat the walls. These holes aren't very deep, so uh, you want as much grip on the wall as you can as you can muster. Okay, so I uh, while I was in the process of gluing this in place, the uh, the battery on my camera died. So uh, this is this is firmly in place. The thing to, that you want to be paying attention to is that this that the, this bar is you know perpendicular to the box there, so things look nice and straight. I still have to go through and I have to put these uh, the ends of these uh, the coil wires into the, into the little flange holes. So what you want to do is you want to try not to jiggle them around too much to scratch things up. I'm going to go ahead and get a, a Q-tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop uh, glue in each one of those holes, and then drop the uh, drop the coil wire down into or the coil wire end down into that hole. So you can see that. And I'm just going to put glue on the end of my Q-tip. You you really don't need much. you want to put these you want to put these parts on pretty pretty close to the end of your build uh, the coils and the bar will stay stable but it's a, it's e easy enough to break these parts off and that's why I included seven of them in the kit instead of the six that are required just wanted to give you that as a heads up but basically just cut your six wires and again same thing uh, it's two and an eighth inches so just line it up with uh, the two and an eighth mark. There we go. Flush cut the wire.
So in this section of the video, I'm going to be describing how you create the uh, create the uh, the spark rods that go along the uh, the top of the machine here. Uh, as you can see, they look a little bit intricate, but they're not nearly as intimidating as they might look. So in order for you to to do that, you're going to need a couple of things. First thing you're going to need is the uh, is, it, is the uh, bending tool, the forming and bending tool, and you're going to need the copper wire. Later in the video, we're going to be talking about creating the, uh, putting the balls onto the end of them. And I have a nice little dipping station. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a nice little dipping station so you can apply the balls to the ends of the uh, rods that you bend. So uh, to start with, I'll go ahead and start describing the, um, the tool here a little bit. Essentially, you have a, a series of slots on the right-hand side that are longer than the ones on the left-hand side. The <clears throat> ones on the right-hand side are for cutting the overall length of the rod. So you basically just lay the rod, lay the wire into the into there, and then use a pair of um, use a pair of uh, flush cutters to cut cut it off, and that'll cut it to length. You move the wire uh, directly from the slot that you cut it in uh, over to the opposite wire or to the opposite slot here, and you'll just hold the wire in place and bend it over at a right angle. You're going to do that twice for every for every size because there are these the uh, bars are symmetrical and side to side so you're going to need to make two per uh, two per slot. Okay so there's that. Uh, again I want to make sure that you're using the right wire. This does say the right angle wire for spark rods. It's 0.5 millimeter in diameter in case uh, you need some, uh, in case you, you know, something happens and you need to get some. Although I did uh, provide more than enough wire to to, to make up uh, this, this group of uh, 19 or 20 uh, spark rods. So you'll have some left over in case something goes wrong and you have to make another one or make an extra one. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the stuff out and show you uh, just, you know, pretty much what's involved in it. Uh, just take the wire out, uncoil it. You want to straighten it as much as you can by hand. The straighter it is, the better they will. The, the rods will end up looking. So, again, I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to lay it into the first slot here. And I'm going to put it in all the way until it stops on this side. And then once I'm done with that, then I'm just going to go ahead and cut the, cut the wire with my flush cutter right at the edge. You want to try to get it as nice a clean cut as you can from that. Okay, so once you've done that, then the next thing to do is, uh, again, you're just going to move over to the... Uh, to the slot, the shorter slot on the on the opposite side of the tool, uh, and then you're just going to bend it over at a right angle. You want to make that make sure that that's formed pretty well. That's once you start putting them on, once you start gluing them onto the machine, <clears throat> into the slots provided there, you you may want to tweak them a little bit. But that's how you make the first one, and I'm going to show you how to make the second one. It's the same one again because you're making two identical copies. And just take the wire, lay it into the slot, bend it over. And that's it. You're just bending it along the flush to the side of the, uh, the tooling plate, and that's pretty much it. So I suggest you go through and uh, do these. Uh, do these all one at a time. Uh, you do need to keep track of, you know, keep track of them. Uh, you might want to get a box and lay it onto the side there, but I would group the group those two together, um, and then as you proceed through them, just line them up, you know, kind of in a in a column here, and then um, that'll make it easier for you to keep track of which ones are which. So that's pretty much all that's required to do that. I am going to go ahead and show you how to, um, once you've got those all made, I'm going to go to show you how to use this tool, which is the dipping station, to, um, to form the balls on the ends of the rods. So I'm going to set that up uh, now. And essentially all I'm doing here is I'm just using uh, super glue and putting super glue into one side of the station. And then you want to pick, take Zap Kicker and put it into the other one. So I'll put the cap on there so I don't regret that later. So it takes it, take your Zap, your Zap Kicker. Put 
put it in the other side. So really all that's required to do that, and again, you want to make sure that you maintain which side, you know, the vertical side and the horizontal side. The, the vertical side is the, the, the side that you bent on the tool is basically the shorter side, the side that's going to end up going up against the, up against the spark plate, just so you're aware of that. So all that's required to do this is basically just dip the um, the tool down, or the spark rod down in, into the cup. Let a for, a bead of uh, super glue form on the end of it. Dip it down into your uh, zap kicker, and you will have a mostly perfectly formed ball at the end of that. And you want to let that hang there for a few seconds let the zap kicker fully do its job and then you want to set them down I recommend sort of setting them down on a paper towel um, but you can do that however you want to if you want to at the very end of this uh, process you could paint those they could be copper colored or they could be gold colored or you can leave them un, uh, or un, unpainted at all um, the detail of that ball is pretty is pretty tiny and you may just opt to leave the uh, leave them alone, but in case you did want to go with the rod of putting a ball onto the end of the rod, which is accurate to the uh, prop, I just wanted to give you a tool to show you how to do that.
to a new world of gods and monsters. 